Hello, a blessed Good Friday to you as you watch this video stream, this uh, service again from afar as we honor our Lord's death, honor our Lord's holy week uh, here this day. And it's a special order of service for Good Friday. I encourage you to uh, download or other, otherwise watch or, or read along the uh, attached uh, the PDF that's available uh, on the web's website uh, for this service. And so let us begin. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament scripture for this day is from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 9. Who has believed what they have heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Thus far the reading. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but, li but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our epistle reading is from Hebrews, the fourth and fifth chapters. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. 
thus far the reading. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross, and so remove us from the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion that we may receive forgiveness of sin and redemption from everlasting death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion. With your spirit me endow for such meditation. Grant that I in love and faith may the image cherish of your suffering, pain, and death that I may not perish. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John's Gospel, the 19th chapter. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to him, said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, He was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out, and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Thus far the reading. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted, see him dying on the tree. Tis the Christ by man rejected, yes, my soul, tis he, tis he. Tis the long-expected prophet, David's son, yet 
David's Lord. Proofs I see sufficient of it, tis the true and faithful word. Tell me ye who hear him groaning, was there ever grief like his? Friends through fear his cause disowning, foes insulting his distress. Many hands were raised to wound him, none would intervene to save. But the deepest stroke that pierced him was the stroke that justice gave. The crucifixion of our Lord. So Pilate delivered Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. Thus far the reading. Upon the cross extended, see world your Lord suspended. Your Savior yields his breath, the Prince of life from heaven. Himself has freely given to shame and blows and bitter death. Your soul in griefs unbounded, your head with thorns surrounded. You died to ransom me, the cross for me enduring. The crown for me securing. You healed my wounds and set me free. Continuing from John chapter 19. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. 
A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Thus far the reading. O sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded, with thorns thine only crown. O sacred head, what glory, what bliss till now was thine. Yet though despised and gory, I joy to call thee mine. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How doth thy face now languish, that once was bright as morn. Grim death with cruel will rigor hath robbed thee of thy life. Thus thou hast lost thy vigor, thy strength in this sad strife. The conclusion of the Passion of our Lord. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross for the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. And again another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. Because of the Jewish day of preparation since the tomb was close at hand, They laid the body of Jesus there. This has been the passion of our Lord. We hear a couple of hymn verses from A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth to introduce us into our sermon today. A lamb goes uncomplaining forth, the guilt of sinners bearing, and laden with the sins of earth, none else the burden sharing. Goes patient on, grows weak and faint, 
to slaughter led without complaint. That spotless life to offer. He bears the stripes, the wounds, the lies, the mockery, and yet replies. All this I gladly suffer. This lamb is Christ, the soul's great friend, the lamb of God our Savior, whom God the Father chose to send to gain for us his favor. Go forth, my son, the Father said, and free my children from their dread of guilt and condemnation. The wrath and stripes are hard to bear, but by your passion they will share the fruit of your salvation. And in answer to that sending of the Father, the words of Jesus from John chapter 19, verse 30. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It has been said that from the moment you are born, you begin to die. Though many of us, hopefully, are in fair to good health and not thinking of death, the fact is that one day we will die. But for those who are nearer to death, especially if it's some sort of disease, perhaps cancer or congestive heart failure, thankfully no one that I'm aware of deathly ill because of coronavirus. But because of these conditions, the thoughts of death and dying are far more frequent and real. Jesus knows what you're going through. He hung on that cross with huge spikes through his hands and feet for hours, gasping for breath. And with every labored breath, he knew it was one closer to his last. The immortal Son of God is going to die as the mortal Son of Man. And there lies that great paradox. God is life and cannot die. Yet we are brought face to face with an incredible fact on this Good Friday. God does die. Jesus did die a very real death, just like the death that awaits you and me. We can't fathom how Jesus, as true God, could allow himself to die. All he had to do was speak just as the mockers prompted him to do. All he had to do was say the word and he would have freed himself from the cross, healed all his wounds, and gone free. Instead, he gives up his spirit. He was willing to die and is very conscious of it all the way until that moment where he gives up his spirit. He then, as the spirit leaves his body, he's, we are faced with the fact that his lips would no longer speak, his eyes would no longer see, his ears no longer hear, those holy hands no more reaching out to touch and heal. Yet Jesus dies willingly, voluntarily, according to the Father's plan. He knows he must be the lamb, the perfect Passover lamb, to be sacrificed for sin. How many of us would dare to sacrifice ourselves for the benefit of even one other person? We stand in awe of those that do, our soldiers, police, the firefighters, the emergency workers, indeed those on the front lines, those that we know of in New York City and other hot spots, 
with the coronavirus, putting themselves knowingly in harm's way for the benefit of those who need their skill, their care. God has put in them a special gift to look past their own well-being and sometimes give up their own life for the benefit of another. And for that, we call them heroes and uphold them with honor. How tragic is the death of Jesus by comparison. He didn't die rescuing a baby from a burning building. He didn't die jumping in front of another soldier to take the bullet for him. No, he died in the midst of mockers and to the, to the delight of the Jewish leaders. Although Jesus had twice heard the words of the Father declare from heaven, this is my beloved Son, on this day, Jesus screams from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As Jesus hangs there alone, forsaken by the same Father in heaven, abandoned and utterly destroyed from sin, Jesus died. He died in fulfillment of the scriptures, fully knowing what they said, fully knowing what he must do to accomplish all things. Only then, in that moment of fulfillment, Jesus cries out, it is finished. The death of Jesus is the most incredible death ever recorded. He gave up his life not just for one person, not just for a family of people, but for the whole world. That's what makes his death an amazing accomplishment. But do we regard him as a hero? Do we give him the honor due? That's why we're gathered here, even at a distance, to honor Jesus, to honor his death the death that has spared billions of believers from eternal death in hell. His death is the death of death itself. It's the reversal of Adam's sin that had taken place so many thousands of years before in the Garden of Eden. St. Paul writes of this in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sinned. So Jesus comes to become sin for us. By dying the sinner's death physically and also spiritually, Jesus took upon himself the penalty of sin so that we, by faith, by faith in Jesus, in his cross, in his death, could be found righteous before the Father in heaven. Again, as Paul writes in Romans, for as by Adam's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by Jesus' obedience the many will be made sinners righteous. This means that his death is life for us. And we can rejoice with the psalmist as he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Death is now but a shadow of its former menacing power. Instead, we now see death as just a doorway from this world to the next. God has revealed to us that our spirit lives on in his presence until the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Just as Jesus yielded his spirit 
only to receive it back again on the day of his resurrection. So we too will receive our spirit back. The Lord is with us, takes us through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death and unto a, an eternity of righteousness. What an incredible death on the cross of Christ. Because Jesus died, we need not fear our death nor the grave, for the sting of death has been removed forever. Jesus promises it is finished. Because of Jesus' death, we need not fear those who persecute us, make fun of us, or look down at us because we are faithful followers of Jesus. For Jesus has borne it all on the cross to his death so that we would have hope. Because of Jesus' death, we need not fear or hide even our sins, great or small. For Christ has known them, bearing them upon his brutally beaten back, his blood-dripped hands and feet. He takes them to his death, to the grave, to be hidden from God our Father forever. Our debt is paid, Jesus assures us. It is finished. Because of Jesus' death that atones for all our sins, we can live well and indeed die well in the wounds of our Lord. In his name, amen. We continue with the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, 
to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The reproaches are a tradition of, of the Holy Christian Church that have been going on for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years, for generations. And it really brings home the impact of our Lord's crucifixion. The first reproach. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, Holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. O Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross didst suffer, ever patient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou pourest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. The second reproach. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over, and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word, and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink. O oh, my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, 
holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross didst suffer, ever patient and lowly, Thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. The third reproach. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God, O my people? Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. O Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross didst suffer, ever patient and lowly, Thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Thy peace be with us, O Jesus, O Jesus. Let us pray. We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your people, who have held the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort and may increase in faith and take hold of, of, of eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.